The Human Development Index, or HDI, uses income to measure a country's standard of living, but it also measures two equally important factors that define a developed society, health and education. These factors capture a nation's ability to provide its people with a long, informed, and healthy life. For the HDI, the United Nations uses one simple yet powerful metric to measure a country's health dimensions, life expectancy at birth. A high life expectancy is a direct indicator that a country provides its population with effective health care, for example, providing doctors, hospitals, and medicine, but also access to clean water and sanitation, and also adequate nutrition. In highly developed countries like Japan or Norway, life expectancy often exceeds 80 years, suggesting excellent preventative care and advanced medical treatment. In contrast, many nations in developing countries, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, have lower life expectancies, often due to high rates of treatable diseases, poverty, and limited access to medical facilities. A long life is only possible when a society is stable and invests heavily in the well-being and safety of its citizens. The education factor in the HDI is comprehensive focusing on two main measurements to gauge the knowledge level of both today's adults and tomorrow's workforce. First is the mean years of schooling amongst adults. This measures the average number of years of formal education a 25-year-old or older adult has actually completed. A high number here shows that older generations had broad access to school. The second is expected years of schooling and this is looking towards the youth demographic. This measures the total number of years of schooling a child starting school today can be expected to receive. A high number here reflects a country's current commitment to investing in its youth and the future. Other statistics also reveal huge variations in the country's education system. First is the literacy rate. This is the percentage of the country's population over the age of 15 who can read and write. Developed nations almost always have literacy rates close to 100%. A low literacy rate signals systemic barriers to development. The other one is the pupil-teacher ratio. This compares the number of students to the number of teachers, especially in primary schools. A low ratio, or fewer students per teacher, is common in developed countries like Finland, usually means smaller class sizes and more individualized instruction, leading to better learning outcomes. A high ratio, or many students per teacher, is common in developing nations, and this can overwhelm educators and hinder a child's ability to learn. The clear differences in these metrics show how development varies. When a country successfully provides its population with both good health and high quality education, it unlocks its human potential. Healthy people can work longer and educated people are more productive and more likely to create and adopt new technology, which as we discussed, is the definition of development. The greater the gap in these factors, the greater the gap in development between countries. These two non-monetary factors prove that true national progress isn't just about the size of a country's central bank. It's about the health and knowledge of its people.